Hello, in this video I'm going to continue my attempts to learn Rust by taking a look at Rust's two primitive compound types, which are arrays and tuples. And by the way, I tried to find an interview with Graydon Hall. Graydon Hall apparently started Rust as a personal project in 2006, or around then, and it was later taken over by a team at Mozilla, which is where he worked. And since then, it's apparently gone through huge changes. But I couldn't actually find a interview with him. I could only find interviews with various people who've worked on some of the teams that are developing Rust or have developed Rust. I couldn't get through a whole one of those, but uh, I did learn some interesting things. I'm going to have another go sometime and see if I can actually find an interview with Graydon Hall. Anyway, let's take a look at arrays here. So I'm going to create an array, let's call it numbers. I've already practiced this a bit and set it equal to some values which have to be in square brackets for an array. So let's set that equal to one, two, three. I'm going to try really hard not to forget any semicolons in this video. And I tried printing that in the way that I'm now somewhat used to, which is a string with curly brackets in it and the variable in there. And that doesn't work. Let's take a look at the error. When I run this, the error tells me that this value can't be formatted with a default formatter, and it suggests I use one of these instead. Let's try this one. So I tried this. I figured by analogy with other languages, probably you can put that in and supply the array as a parameter. And indeed that actually works. So if I run that, we get a nice printout of the array. One thing that surprised me is I can't actually change values in that. So if I try to do numbers, square brackets, let's try to change the value at index zero to, for example, seven, and then print that. That doesn't work. If I run it, the reason it doesn't work, it tells me, is because this is not mutable, which is interesting. So it's not just that without mutable, you can't change what the variable refers to. It's that you can't even change the thing that it refers to without this mute keyword indicating it's mutable. So now if I run this, we can see that we can change the elements in the array. I thought I'd better look up how to loop over an array, and it looks like this. What I was surprised by was the lack of round brackets here, but I can put four i in numbers, and then the curly brackets, print ln, exclamation mark, round brackets, and then I can print these individual numbers in the array using this technique. So if I run this, then we see that they do actually print out just fine. I don't know why there are no round brackets, but I quite like that. The round brackets clearly are not really useful here from a syntactic perspective. We can also declare arrays without initializing them. So to declare an array, of course, you need to say what type of thing is in it because an array can only store one type of thing in Rust. And you need to say how many elements it's going to get. So since I've um, already used numbers here, and since Rust will let me create a variable that shadows that original variable, let's just use the name numbers again. So I'm going to say let numbers, and I'm just going to try to specify a type here. So we want a colon, square brackets, like array brackets. And in there, I can say I want an array containing type u32, 32-bit ints. And let's say I want two of those. And let's see if that works. Well, it just doesn't like it. Expected one of seven possible tokens. Okay, it doesn't like that. In fact, it's a semicolon that I have to use here. Let's try again. And that actually is okay. So I can initialize this directly here, but let's try printing this out and see what happens. So I'm gonna use this to try to print numbers again and run that. And it actually won't even compile. And if I take a look at the error, it's telling me numbers isn't initialized. So it actually checks whether numbers is initialized or not before it will even compile it. So let's make this mutable and try to initialize the values one by one. I could just write here equals and put in the values that I need right here. Let's try that. So that does actually work, but let's get rid of that and see if I can initialize them one by one. So what about if I say numbers square bracket zero equals four or whatever. I'm just gonna try that. 
you can see it still doesn't compile. And then let's duplicate that and set one equal to five and now try and it still doesn't like it. So it's still telling me that numbers is not initialized. It just won't let me do this. So instead of that, let's just initialize it since apparently that's the only way I can get it to compile. If I actually initialize it when I declare it right here, I can't figure out any other way to get this to work. And another thing that we can do is we can easily initialize an array with a certain number of the same value in it. So I can do this and that doesn't actually need to be mutable. And it is actually giving me a warning about that. Okay, let's try this. So let numbers colon square brackets. And now instead of specifying the type, I'm going to specify a number that I want to initialize this array with. Let's put seven in there. And let's say that I want three of them. And then I'm going to duplicate this line, move it down and run this. I keep putting a comma in there instead of a semicolon. Let's try that. Doesn't like that either. I think I've actually got to set it equal to this. Let's try that. So we can see now why that can't be a comma because to create an array with all the same value in like seven in this case, so I've got three sevens in this array. I have to use equals and the square bracket notation. So if I had a comma in there, it will be initializing an array with two values, seven and three like this. But if I put a semicolon in, then I get three values and they're all set to seven. Okay, so that's arrays. It's gonna take me a little while to get used to this, I think, but uh, it is pretty straightforward. And the other thing that I want to show you is tuples. So there are tuples in Python. That's the only other place I've personally come across them. And in Python, tuples are a structure of fixed length where you can have values of different types in there. And it seems to be similar in Rust. One difference between Rust and Python though, is that in Python, you can iterate over a tuple and you can't iterate over a tuple in Rust. Let's create a tuple. So at first this actually looks similar to creating an array because I can initialize it with values, except I need round brackets here. Let's put in there maybe a string and we'll have a number. And then I can actually print that using this syntax right here. So let's print values. You can print tuples up to 12 values. And after that, it refuses to do it. So if I run that, we get a nice printout of this tuple. To actually access values in the tuple, we use a syntax that I've not seen in any other programming language. Let's put X in there. And I'm going to say let X equal values dot one. That's actually going to be this seven right here. Let's try it. So we get seven coming out on the console. If I want that hello, I use dot naught. So it's kind of like an array subscript, except use this dot notation instead of square brackets. And once again, we can actually change the values in the tuple, but I think we have to respect the types here. So let's do values dot one equals eight. And then let's just try to print the whole tuple. So this does not work because I haven't declared the tuple as mutable. Let's just try it though. And you can see I get an error. Yeah, partly because I've managed to miss off a semicolon actually. But if I run that again, you can see it's telling me it's gonna to have to be mutable if I want to change this. So let's say let moot values equal that stuff. And then if I run it, it actually does print out and I've set the second value to eight. But I don't think I can set it, for example, to a string or a floating point or whatever, because I've already set the types when I created the tuple. So that would have to be now an integer and then it works. And we can also declare the types in tuples and create an empty tuple. Let's say let mute, I'll call it values again. And I'm going to set the type here, which has to be in round brackets because we're dealing with a tuple now. Square brackets for arrays, round brackets for tuples. And let's say we want a tuple which has a U32 in it and a F64. So this works if I've remembered it correctly. Yeah, but let's try printing it out. If I try that, I actually get an error. And this is telling me that I haven't initialized values. So of course I could initialize it right here, just like I did with that one. 
but I could also initialize the values separately. So let's do values dot naught equals nine. And if I try to run that, it still doesn't work because the whole thing isn't initialized yet. It actually tells me it's only partially assigned. If I duplicate that, let's set the second value here, which is gonna to have to be floating point. And now it actually works. I thought it worked. Let's try this again. Wow, it doesn't actually work. It seems like I have to initialize it here. Now this is really strange because I could have sworn when I tried this on my other computer that it would let me do this, but it's not letting me do it now. I'm honestly puzzled by that. Is it possible that something has slightly changed in Rust in between installing these two versions on two different computers? I don't know, but here it quite clearly wants me to initialize it when I actually create it. Perhaps I'm just getting confused because I think I can do this. Values equals round brackets. And let's try setting this to initially zero and 0 0.1. Let's see if this works. It actually does work. So that, that's probably what I'm thinking of. I don't think Rust is changing that quickly. So if we create it and we don't initialize it, we have to then initialize it all in one go before we're able to use it. Okay, so let's take a look at the whole thing now, see what we've got. Okay, so that's the whole thing. As usual, I'm going to put a link on YouTube in the description of this video to blog.kforprogramming.com where you'll be able to find a write-up of this. And if you click any of the code in there, it'll take you through to GitHub so you can see this code on GitHub. Do let me know what you think. Is it useful to see the mistakes I'm making as I try to learn this? Or should I try to edit the videos a bit more or just make them more polished somehow? You can let me know if you want. Another thing that I discovered, which I sort of partly knew before, but some of the videos that I watched or started watching also talked about it, is that Rust is not exactly object oriented. It fulfills some of the criteria that people use to define object orientation and others it doesn't. So I think the idea of creating a sort of halfway compromise between non-object oriented, just procedural and object oriented is actually a really interesting idea because probably for most purposes, you don't really need advanced features of object orientation. But I am wondering what I would do if, for example, I wanted to create a GUI or graphical user interface program in Rust, would I then have, you know, like widgets like buttons and windows and whatnot? And if I can't override classes, which I assume I can't, I'm not sure, then how would I go about creating custom versions of those things? I'm curious how Rust handles that. Now, I'm not sure what's next, but I think maybe the documentation that I'm going through is now going to start going through how Rust handles types, which is very interesting in Rust because it's got this whole seemingly quite unique way of dealing with memory allocation to make it much harder than it would be in a language like C or C++ to create errors. That's really one of the selling points of Rust. So I'm very curious to get on to looking at that. And from what I've seen so far, it does seem complicated, but I suppose like anything else, once you get used to it, it's fine. And however complicated it is, I doubt whether it's as complicated as C++ has ended up being. So maybe we'll tackle that in the next video.